were already planning for their space conquest. If you can build a submarine twice as big as this craft, and they had submarines this big at the time, engineering, structurally, it won't be a problem at all to make this craft. I have a gut feeling that these drives were giant balls full of mercury and the mercury was spinning, creating the anti-gravity lifting force. This is my personal hunch. Submarines loaded with, a submarine with 500 tons of mercury was torpedoed in the South Atlantic and everybody was trying to figure out where the hell were the Germans hauling all this mercury? Did they have that many cavities to fill with amalgam on their uh, South Polar colonies or South Polar base or why, what the hell did they need all this mercury for? And obviously they needed the mercury for their anti-gravity drive. Cigar-shaped battleships have been observed around this planet. In the film the authors paint a picture that these are uh, all terrestrially made German craft. I do not agree with them, and I think that dozens, if not hundreds, of races visit us each year, and this has been the case since time immemorial. Another photograph of a longer cigar-shaped mothership around Earth. Some of these could be German. And a photograph of a much bigger cigar-shaped hanging over one of the moon craters. Photograph that came from an amateur astronomer on Earth, he took the picture with his uh, telescope. There is a big enigma as to whether Hitler died and what happened to the Germans at the end of the war. Did they escape? And if they did, where did they go? And we would turn, as usual, to our favorite tabloid sources to kick off another uh, exploration. This time, uh, the German presence on the South Pole. Can we lower this a little bit? With the, there's a bolt, yeah, the other way. The UFO mystery is finally solved, solved. Yeah, excellent. It is not UFOs that visit our planet, but Germans riding UFOs that come from a secret South Polar base. They are leftover Nazis bent on establishing a bloody Fourth Reich. These uh, subtle overtures, uh, the frightening of the masses with the Fort Reich uh, impending victory again over us is another hoax, another threat of choice, the Nazi threat. Sister threat to the alien threat and the eco, eco ecological threat, threat uh, from the <laughs> never-ending Pandora box of the Illuminati for reasons which we should discuss in a minute. Anyway, let's see whether there is some ground to these rumors that the Germans established a massive presence on the South Pole. Harbinson, in his fictional book Genesis, talks about German South Polar expeditions in the 30s. They are built up from 42, 43, 44 of a massive colony there, and finally they are escaped by submarines at the very end of the war. The social scientists, all the elite German scientists disappeared, probably there. Fictional account. And later on, they have been doing abductions on the terrestrial population for their own genetic experimentation purposes. From their source of flying, without any damage or resistance, all over the globe. Is there any truth to these tabloid or fictional rumors? Or could this be another designer leak by the secret services in the Illuminati? The story is that the Germans escaped 
to the Queen Maud land, which is south of South Africa. The present day Queen Maud land, the Norwegian Queen, I think. Some of these, this land was Norwegian, but after the Germans captured Norway, it was legally German. And they established a colony there in the land that they renamed the Neuschwabenland. Right south of South Africa. So let's see if there are some grounds to these rumors of the German presence there. They discovered giant lakes that never froze, the Schirmacher group of lakes, and uh, quite a bit of area free of any snow, which was very puzzling. And we've never been told in the geography books that there are areas that look like the Arizona desert, free of snow, full of mountains of coal, and we would see the documentary of Tumidi End. Uh, these are some of the mountains that never freeze. They have no, I no glaciers, no ice. The Richard group, <coughs> Captain Richard was the uh, captain of the Schwabenland ship, the mother ship that was shooting the planes, uh, the, the flying boat. Melted water on the side. Yeah. Okay. Uh, certain German publications from the Canadian Samizdat uh, company talk in great detail, Christoph Friedrich talks in great detail about the German social development and their escape and uh, presence to this day on the South Pole. In many books of a similar nature, Hitler's Secret Sciences, The Morning of the Magicians, and The Spear of Destiny, researchers have talked at length about the occult, the magic, the shamanic, and the satanic exercises of the elite of the Third Reich and the SS. We have a whole two-hour documentary, an interview with Chan Johnson and Al Bilek on the topic that covers this area in great detail. But the Germans were in contact with half a dozen alien races. They were also subcontracting for the um, Agartian faction, for the Agartian faction of the, how should they call it, the fallen angelic presence on our planet. The Agartian faction, Agart the Agartians were fighting the Shambhala faction of the same fallen angelic presence. We have to keep in mind that uh, in the Hegelian world of the illuminated Luciferian empire, it's always the thesis fighting the antithesis. They would never leave a situation where there is only one thesis and no antithesis left for it to fight. So as for the natural selection and for the survival of the fittest mechanism to work, and to bring on a never-ending evolution toward perfection, toward Superman, in the case of human genetics. So with this philosophy in mind, it is no coincidence that possibly these factions were fighting with each other. The door. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, somebody is knocking. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. 